this roadshow event for drivers uh, has its aim in uh, increasing uh, driver's knowledge as well as capacity regarding work and time, uh, new European directives, uh, provisions, and different other issues related to the uh, driver's uh, activities. You see that our session uh, has been divided into two parts. First will be about um, mobility package and posting of AGV drivers. I will have a representative from the Lithuanian Transport Safety Administration and then Minister of Social Security and Labor of the Republic of Lithuania. Second session, uh, we'll have um, a discussion. We'll see the discussion about the driving and resting time. We'll have a representative from Lithuanian Transport Safety Administration as well. It will be the same presenter. And then we'll have time for Q&A. Except for the mentioned institution. We have also a representative from Lithuanian Labor Inspectorate. We have also social partners that will be able to answer uh, questions that can be peculiar to our drivers uh, and linked with the topic of our today's roadshow discussion. It can be linked with national rules and obligations. Uh, then we'll also have information from European Labour Authority, uh, who will share resources available online for drivers uh, and what drivers can find themselves uh, about rules, about provisions, about some practical aspects. To officially open the session, I'd like to give the floor to esteemed Jean Mark Guk from European Labour Authority. Uh, who will make introduction to this session? So, uh, uh, Jean, the floor is yours. Thank you, Irene. Um, and you're all very welcome to this, which is the uh, part of ELA, the European Labour Authority's Roadshow on Road Transport. Uh, road Transport is the theme and the focus this year for the European Labour Authority. Um, and we will continue with the work, but it had a particular focus this year. The European Labour Authority is a relatively new European agency. It's only three years old, and it was put in place with a mission to ensure fair and effective labour mobility around the European Union member states. I work with the um, information section and my part is to make sure that we have, um, we get in accurate information in a um, accessible form, either online, in print, however we can get it out to you. And the, the information is around your rights and your obligations, um, particularly your rights as an employee, the obligations of your employers, plus your obligations as an employee. Um, our aim is to ensure that um, this sector, the heavy goods vehicle sector, um, becomes safe and, and effective. Uh, that it becomes an attractive industry to work in, it becomes a safe industry to work in, and that every driver is getting their um, their due rights and obligations paid to them. So um, the we welcome you all very much. This is quite a novel event. Um, it's our first online. Uh, we're looking at the best way that we can get to our drivers and engage with them. We want this to be very interactive se session and please um, make sure that uh, you ask your questions here um, in complete confidence. As I say, we have experts in the room that uh, and online that can help you answer your questions. So I think we'll start our first uh, part, which is about posting of HGV drivers. It will be about application of the new rules on posting of drivers in the road transport sector. Gilles Vinasiaskunas is representative from the Lithuanian Transport Safety Administration. He's head of Panevežys division, and he will explain about application of the new rules on posting of drivers. Uh, Gilles Vinasiaskunas, the floor is yours. 
Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining this session. As I was already introduced, I'm Gilles Vinas Yashkunas. I'm from the Lithuanian Transport Safety Administration. I work in the supervision division at Panevežys department. Next slide, please. Uh, during this session, uh, I'd like to present you the rules for uh, posting of drivers established in Directive 2020-1057. The directive establishes rules with the aim of creating safe, efficient, and socially responsible road transport sector, ensuring adequate working conditions and social protection for drivers, as well as uh, fair business and competition conditions for road transport operators. The provisions of this directive uh, are applied from the 2nd of February 2022. When is a driver considered seconded or posted? When you as a driver uh, are considered as posted driver, if you carry out cargo transportation for a certain period of time in a country other than the one where your employer is established, and you carry out the following types of cargo transportation, cabotage cargo transportation. These are such cargo transportation when your employer for whom you work is not established in the country where you carry out domestic transportation operations. Transportation by another country's road vehicle, is a freight transportation whereby activity between two member states or between a member state and non-EU state and your employer is uh, not established in any of these countries. Voyage without cargo uh, is a journey uh, involving cabotage or carriage by another country's road vehicle subject to posting rules. Combined carriage operation uh, is the initial or last leg of a combined transport operation in carriage by another country's vehicle or cabotage. Then you are posted driver only when you perform that initial or last leg of such uh, carriage. The driver is considered posted from the moment he enters another country while transporting cargo or enters the country and intends to load cargo there which will be transported to a country other than the carrier's country of registration or establishment. The secondment is complete when the cargo is unloaded. If the driver is traveling without cargo, his travel starts only after entering the country where loading will take place. When you are not a posted driver, you are not a posted driver, if you carry out the following types of cargo transportation, bilateral cargo operations. It's transportation from the member state where your employer is established to another country uh, or return from any other country uh, to the member state where your employer is established. For example, if Lithuanian carrier transport cargo from Lithuania to another country or cargo is transported to Lithuania. Limited additional loading and or unloading operation in a member states or non-EU countries, uh, which is also uh, in, performed in other countries. For example, a Lithuania uh, carries cargo from Lithuania to France, on the way additionally loads cargo in Poland, which will be unloaded in Germany. Transit. Crossing a member state without loading or unloading, when a country is transited without loading or unloading, or uh, passengers are neither uh, boarded or disembarked. For example, from Lithuania to France in transit through Poland and Germany, the driver is not considered posted to any country during the entire trip. A journey without cargo, if the journey is carried out in a bilateral operation. Combined carriage operation is when the initial or last leg of a combined transport operation is a bilateral operation, then you are not a posted driver only when you perform that initial or last leg. What administrative rules and controls apply? Carriers must provide information about posted drivers on the driver posting portal. For that reason, we use the internal market, internal market information system, IMI, where each driver's personal posting declaration are filled out. The declaration contains information about the carrier, valid license number, data of the transport manager, 
data about the driver, date of commencement of driver's employment contract, expected start and end date of the secondment, vehicle data, and the type of transport services performed. Beat freight transportation, passenger transportation, international transportation, or cabotage operation. This information will be checked by the official of the responsible institutions during roadside checks. During inspections, drivers must provide a copy of the posting declaration submitted through the IMI system, proof of a transport uh, carried operated in the member state, tachograph records, and uh, when carrying out international road transport operation or cabotage operation, the symbol of the countries written on the registration sheets uh, should be in accordance with the registrations and record keeping requirements. As you know, from 20th of August 2020, drivers who drive um, uh, vehicles secured with analog tachographs must, after crossing the state border, after stopping and the nearest possible stopping place near the border, or after crossing the border, enter the country into which they are entering, are crossing, uh, uh, insert the registration uh, symbol. You must also record the characters where the work started and ended. From the 2nd of February 2022, drivers also should enter the country symbols. If the posting declaration is invalid during the posting or other inconsistencies are found, the carrier may receive a request from the country where the driver was checked to provide the missing data. Information on uh, declarations are not uh, available. However, I can mention what uh, are the uh, responsibility uh, for such violations. Paragraph 5 of Article 450 of the Code of Administrative Offenses of the Republic of Lithuania provides for a fine for an offense when posted drivers do not have secondment declarations. So, uh, for such a misdemeanor, drivers face a fine between 300 and 500 euro. Managers of legal entities or responsible persons who are entrusted with the manager for transportation face a fine between 700 and 1400 euro. Despite this, If uh, officials during the inspection find a violation that the driver who is posted to the Republic of Lithuania uh, drove a vehicle without a copy of the posting declaration, such driver is prohibited from further carrying professional road transport with TP transport activities until the identified violations are eliminated and a copy of posting declaration is submitted through the IMI system. So, Esteemed participants, I have presented to you the provisions established in Directive 2020-1057, which is in force since the 2nd of February 2022. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I thank you for giving me the word and for giving me the possibility uh, to present provisions of uh, Lithuanian legislation on wages and per diem payment for drivers. Um, I'm going to discuss uh, new legal acts. The majority of them uh, came into force uh, this year. And I will start uh, from the legal act uh, on wages and other benefits related to employment relations, which um, must be paid by transfer to the employee's payment account as specified to, it's, um, Uh, the money uh, for allowances and salaries uh, have to be transferred uh, to the um, driver's account, but uh, it doesn't have to be employees' uh, 
um, personal account in a bank. Uh, it can be a payment uh, account in another institution in Lithuania and abroad. It can be account, for example, uh, in a credit union or a PayPal. Also, uh, the employer may not transfer wages and or other benefits related to employment, as well as per diems and business trips expenses to a family member or friend of the employee. I will uh, also discuss uh, the changes uh, that came into force in July the 1st this year regarding per diems. This is very topical for the drivers. First of all, I would like to know that uh, per diems uh, cannot be less than 50% of the established amount uh, in the country. For example, if it's in Belgium, it's 63 euros. It cannot be um, less than 50%. 62 euros in Germany. So 31 euro is the minimal amount that uh, should be paid uh, uh, to the driver or another employee, but today we're discussing drivers, uh, but they have uh, to establish a certain amount and they have to be decided on by collective agreement. If there's no collective agreement, it they can do that in accordance with the legal act, for example, on uh, the wages system in the country. Uh, in any case, there has to be a consultation and information procedure. And if there are more than 20 employees in the company, then uh, there is um, uh, this uh, works council has to be established uh, uh, and uh, it can participate in the negotiations. What are the main criteria uh, for uh, the per diem reduction up to 50%? So the most important aspects and criteria are objective criteria, specific sizes, uh, no discrimination. There cannot be any cases when per team uh, is paid at a higher level to the employees who are more experienced, uh, who have higher seniority in the company. And when um, uh, employees um, have to go abroad to purchase certain goods, uh, and they have to, cannot be any difference, uh, for example, between 50 and 70% of per diem that is paid to employees in the same company. And also there has to be um, a, a consent of the employee because since uh, July this year in the agreements, we often saw that uh, uh, it was established um, lower allowance uh, that is uh, provided for in the law since July the 1st, so the contracts have to be changed. Uh, uh, information has to be provided in writing. Uh, it can be provided via um, uh, email and has to be uh, information has to be presented not in Lithuanian, not only in Lithuanian language, uh, but uh, in another language understood by this employee. Here we present uh, uh, a list which is not final or when uh, um, daily allowance cannot be reduced. And I would like to draw attention of the drivers that uh, If uh, their um, daily allowance is reduced in such circumstances, this is uh, against the law. So as an example, if an employee does not fulfill work norms, uh, uh, for example, um, delivery deadlines uh, set by the employer or travel route is not 
ensured by the employee. If um, the driver performs work functions uneconomically, or if uh, there is a situation on the road uh, when the driver fails to complete the task within the set deadline, deadline when it does not obey the demands of the employer or his representative. Also, when there is a violation of traffic rules, even then um, the daily allowance cannot be reduced. And payment of advance uh, and per diem unless uh, otherwise uh, stipulated in the collective or employment contract, an advance payment for, uh, of at least 50% of the per diem calculated for the business trip must be made to the employee no later than on the last working day before the start of the business trip. Uh, after the sec uh, posted employee returns from the uh, posting, uh, the daily allowance is recalculated and then paid part of the daily allowance is paid no later than the day of the salary payment. And as of uh, July the 1st, 2022, then paid part of the daily allowance for the days of the previous calendar month's business trip is paid together with the salary according to the, the salary payment procedure and uh, deadlines. Uh, or, or once uh, if uh, an employee asks uh, to be paid once or twice according to the law. And as you can see in the first point, it can be established in a collective agreement or labor contract. And uh, since July the 1st, uh, the new legal act came into force and all the procedures have to be established in accordance with this law. And here we see additional information uh, for posting. Uh, if the employee is posted to another EU uh, state or Iceland, uh, Norway, Liechtenstein, uh, the documents uh, provided uh, before departure for the posting must additionally state uh, the salary to which the employee is entitled to, uh, under the law. Also uh, per diems uh, and allowances to compensate for the actual travel expenses, accommodation and meals expenses related to the posting. Um, and um, we provide a link to the host country's official national website that provides information for posted workers. Uh, and also there is a representative uh, of the European Labour Organization Agency and uh, to which uh, drivers can apply and obtain information. And of course, um, there is an uh, it's possible to appeal to the Labor Disputes Commission. Um, if uh, wages are not paid, if per diems are not paid or reduced uh, 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 when there are situations that I mentioned uh, before, employee has a right to apply to the Labor Disputes Commission with a request to examine the labor dispute if his rights are violated. And of course, you will receive uh, the slides uh, and information is available not only in Lithuanian, but also in Russian, Ukrainian languages. And uh, of course, uh, you can apply to the Labor Inspection and, and the Labor Disputes Commission works under Labor Inspection and uh, also we can provide assistance uh, uh, in applying uh, to the Labor Disputes Commission. Thank you. Once again, the second topic I'd like to present to you are changes in the mobility package and how it is reflected in the 
uh, arrest and uh, uh, work time. Uh, there is one and a half years transitional period, which is uh, implemented uh, during one and a half years. I remind, uh, we also tried to decrease the uh, unfair competition uh, as well as violation of rules. Uh, and also we, uh, we thought about the safety of uh, uh, driving. The amendments in the mobility package uh, uh, improve the working conditions of drivers uh, improved. Uh, undistorted and fair competition between carriers is um, ensured. And uh, with the changes of the mobility package, it is established that during normal weekly rest of any period of weekly rest resting longer than 45 hours. Uh, it is compensated for the previous periods of short and weekly rest. The driver is prohibited from resting in the vehicle. The mobility package stipulates that carriers organize the work of drivers in such a way that drivers can return to the employer's center of activity where the driver is normally located and when the driver's weekly rest period begins in, regard, in the country where the carrier is established or return to their place of residence within each of the four a period of consecutive weeks to take at least one normal weekly rest period of more than 45 hours, which is taken as a compensation for a reduced weekly rest period. Again, when a driver takes two consecutive periods of reduced weekly rest, the carrier arranges the driver's work in such a way that the driver can return before the start of the normal weekly rest period of more than 45 hours, which is used as compensation. If the carrier does not ensure that the driver returns to the carrier's country of establishment or his place of residence within four weeks, uh, it brings liability from 560 to 900 euro. If the cir circumstances are exceptional and there is no danger to safe traffic, the driver is allowed to exceed the daily and weekly driving time to reach the carrier's country of establishment or his place of residence. In order for the driver to reach the uh, activity center or his place of residence, where he can take advantage of the weekly rest period, the driver's daily and weekly driving time may be exceeded by no more than two hours. But before the additional driving, the driver must take at least 30 minutes of uninterrupted rest. No later than arriving at his destination or a suitable stopping place, the driver must write the reason for such deviation by hand on the tachograph registration sheet, if the tachograph is analog or in the printout if the tachograph is digital. It is important to note that such extended period of driving time shall be compensated by an equivalent rest period, which shall be taken in its entirety in conjunction with any rest period until the end of the third week following the week in question. As you know, before the mobility package came into force, Drivers used to enter country symbols using a digital tachograph only at the beginning at the end of daily working hours. The mobility package established that drivers who drive vehicles with an analog tachograph already mark the border crossing on the tachograph registration sheet from the 20th of August 2020. From February the 2nd of this year, Drivers who drive a vehicle with a digital tachograph must enter the country symbol every time they cross the border. That's as soon as they cross it or at the nearest possible stop closest to the border. When crossing the border of member state by ferry or train, the driver enters the country symbol into the digital tachograph at the port or station of arrival. I want to mention here once again, that from practice, drivers often ask that the Code of Administrative Offenses of the Republic of Lithuania provides for a fine when not displaying the national symbols at the start or end of the day's work or we're crossing national borders. 
In such case, the drivers will be fined from 300 to 500 euro. Carriers must organize the operation of their vehicle fleet in such a way as to ensure that the vehicles owned by the company used for international freight transport return to the company at its established address or registered address no later than every eight weeks after its departure. Carriers who fail to return the vehicles on time to the country of establishment within the set deadline may be fined from 560 to 900 euro. I'd like to mention that drivers must present the tachograph registration sheets of the current day and the previous 28 days or 100 and records and printouts as well as their driver's card. The mobility package stipulates that starting from 31st of December 2024 will be required to submit tachograph registration sheets for the current day and for the past already 56 days, or 100 and records of their activities and printouts, as well as their driver's card. Today, drivers who do not present their current driver's card or mandatory activity data uh, may be subject to a fine from 300 to 500 euro. In this presentation, I'd like to also mention that starting from the summer of this year, greater attention is paid to the analysis of drivers' walk and rest time during road inspections. And after the first eight of first of August 2022, drivers are subject to penalties for violations of work and rest time, as well as are subject to penalties. The driver's working time is from time of the beginning to the end of his work, during the drive, during which the driver is at his place of work at the disposal of the employers and performs his function or activities, excluding breaks, which is time dedicated to various road transport activities, driving, loading, assistance in boarding and disembarking passengers from the vehicle, cleaning, maintenance, other tasks, maintenance, supervision, administrative, police, customs, immigration, procedures, and other formalities. It's also time at which driver cannot freely dispose of his time and has to be at his workplace, ready to take usual work, related with on standby when waiting for loading works, etc. Thus, when night work is performed, the daily working time of the driver cannot exceed 10 hours in each 24-hour period. Night time in road transport companies is the time from 0 to 7 hours a.m. Drivers can work for a maximum of 6 hours without a break. If the aggregate of the driver's working hour is between 6 and 9 hours, a break of at least 30 minutes must be inserted into the working time. And if the sum of working hours exceeds nine hours, break of at least 45 minutes must be provided. Breaks can be divided into time slots, each lasting at least 15 minutes. The average weekly working time must not exceed 48 hours. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've presented to you the rules for driving and resting, which have been changed by mobility package. Now it's the time for your questions. Thank you, Erin. I know all is good. Um, hang on, I just have to like, yes, sorry. Um, yes. Uh, so to, to let you know a bit more about the resources available online uh, in the matter of road transport, uh, the first resource that you can look at is the YouTube channel of the European Labour Authority. Um, you need to go to YouTube and just really type in the whole European Labour Authority um, in the search box. Uh, then you will find the, the profile of uh, the, the authority and you can look at the playlist um, in the banner. 
and uh, there you will find the road to fair transport campaign material uh, you will see there is quite a lot of different videos different format different subjects shorter or longer videos that you can browse through um, to learn a bit more and to review the elements that we've said today um, the second place you can look at is the European Labour Authority's website, uh, which is uh, ella.europa.eu. Um, there, you, if you search in the banner at the top, there is the campaigns uh, box, and you can find the 2022 Road to Fair Transport uh, link that will lead you to all the leaflets that have been created that are available in all EU language, including uh, Lithuanian, obviously. Uh, and uh, you can download those leaflets there. Um, as you can see, there are two leaflets. Uh, right, one is more general about the rights and obligations of posted drivers. And the second one is about the driving and resting times. Uh, at the back of those leaflets, you can find a QR code uh, that will send you to the Your Europe website uh, on which you will find uh, quite a lot of different interesting uh, information as well, um, especially the remuneration uh, question uh, that was asked a bit before in the chat. Uh, and finally, the last interesting website can be uh, the European Commission's website, um, on which if you go to the mobility package uh, web page, you can find some question and answers uh, regarding the general rules uh, applicable to uh, road transport and also question and answers regarding driving and resting times. Uh, all those links are being sent to you in the chat box right now, uh, so you can get them, open them, and everything is online and easily accessible.